One of the most significant problems is grade inflation. And according to our respected rector recommendations, that we have to re-achieve the Riyadh College's dentistry and pharmacy vision to become one of the most prominent higher educational institutions of learning locally, regionally, and internationally. So we have to avoid these problems in our institution. What is great inflation? The most common definition of great inflation that it is a process whereby grades in educational examinations show a pattern of improvement over time that is not matched by an equivalent improvement in learning. Grade inflation over the last decade has been described by educationalists around the world in near threatening terms. For example, Leaf described it as undermining uh, that great inflation undermines the integrity of college education, just as monetary inflation undermines a nation's economy. Dresden's 2004 describes it as a nightmare, while for Stone, he describes it as a social and economic cancer. From a statistical point of view, Stewart and Christopher 2012, collected historical data about the letter grades awarded by more than 200 colleges in, and universities in USA. Their analysis confirms that the share of A grades awarded was skyrocketed over the years. About 43% of all letter grades given were A's. As you see here in this chart, if you can recognize this red uh, curve, this is the A grade, this is the most obvious increase in all over the grades from 1940 to 200 and 2008. If you can see here that uh, by 2008 about 44% or 43% of the GPAs of all the students in USA was 43%. And also, if you can observe here the sudden increase or the surge of the A curve from the mid 60s till the mid 70s, at this time there was the Vietnam War. The Vietnam War is an era in which the professors was keen that they uh, uh, keen to give their students very high grades so as to avoid them from landing in the Vietnam War. Uh, so as to avoid landing in this world, they always give high grades. So researchers cite this era as the beginning or the genesis of grade inflation. Uh, also, if you can see here by the end of the curve, these students, which are they are called in USA the baby boomers, because they were born they were born uh, from the 40s and 50s. These baby boomer students became the professors. Later on, uh, so the students of yesterday became the professors of the today. So they had inherited the attitude of these professors, of the professors before to increase the grades. <coughs> also, this graph shows the mean uh, between also the same 200 universities in USA. The normal mean, which is the normal in, in any population students, was C. That was in the 60s. And then it had been B within the 80s, while in 2007 it became A. So, uh, why great inflation is a problem? What is the consequences of great inflation? Great inflation makes it more difficult to identify the truly exceptional students as more students come to get the highest possible grades. You cannot dis differentiate between a potential exceptional student and a normal student because of both of them had A's. Grade inflation is not uniform between schools. This places students in more strictly graded schools and departments in an inequitable disadvantage. For example, if you have two students, one student graduated from a rigorous graded policy school, like for example Princeton University, and another student who joined uh, another university like Brown's University, which is have a reputation of giving easy scores, these two students have inequality in their grades, and this can affect them too much during employment. 
because there is a very interesting study that showed that the recruitment officers look for the grades as one of the most important criteria. Even they were told that these students with lower GPA attended colleges with tougher grading policies. Grade inflation will make faculties fail to teach their students what it means to succeed, which erodes their self-esteem. Students need to be able to fail in order to develop the determination to succeed. And great inflation prevents students from learning this vital lesson. Unfortunately, the above reason led most of the students nowadays more eager to succeed than to learn. And as you see here, Albert, Albert Einstein great the quotation, try not to, be, uh, to become a man of success, but rather try to become a man of value. Also, the, one of the uh, big problems is that great inflation leads to cheapening of the value and importance of both college degree and academic honors. For Hesketh and Brown, they argue that a great many university graduates with high GPAs are bound for disappointment. There will not be the number of high paying quality jobs they expect, and their years in college will form an economic perspective from uh, an economic perspective be largely wasted. Great inflation will lead to loss of degree value in the job market. Wolf has explained how in UK there, there is no use, no economic use for a large proportion of the high degree graduates generated each year by universities. He estimates that only about 72,000 vacancies are available each year in UK while there is more than there were more over than 300,000 graduates in 2005, with government plans to increase the number in the future. Great inflation is putting a big question mark on the outgoing products of some of the high-ranked universities, gaining high ranks through faculty research while compromising the inherent institutional educational strength. This question is, what is the high rank, or what is this high rank about that? One of the most famous examples is Harvard's College, in which the Harvard's College students' newspapers reported on December 3, 2014, that the median grade at Harvard College was an A-, minus, and the most frequently awarded grade was an A, which the paper said supported fears that the school has lesser grading standards than other compatible schools. Consequently, higher education in Harvard and many other famous universities appears to start losing public trust. The general public has be become increasingly focusing on what is happening in higher education. Colleges and universities need to take a more critical look at their practices if they are to regain the trust for society that they once held. After we finish the consequences of grade inflation, we have to mention the causes, the possible causes of grade inflation. The first cause is pressure from the students. Most faculties are experienced in the familiar end of semester scheme in which the students come arguing for higher grades. Anything lesser than higher grade will result in endless emails crying during office hours. Dealing with all these complaints is time consuming, and as a faculty, he or she had other research activities to do. Pressure from evaluation surveys at, at, teaching, at teaching intensive colleges and universities in particular, <coughs> student evaluations are often of paramount importance. Student evaluations are often used by committees to help them make decisions about awarding the faculty promotion. Numerous studies seem to suggest that generous grade distributions correspond to positive teaching evaluation. As we see here, this job, this is a faculty trying to inflate grades. He gave A to all his students, uh, aiming for a tenure or a promotion by his institution. Pressure from colleagues. Some faculty who wish to curb grade inflation may feel that they are the only one, ones fighting the problem. If everyone else is giving out inflated grades, why should they be the ones to stand alone? Pressure to retain students. The easiest way to maintain enrollment is to keep the students that are already in campus, on campus. 
the professors, departments, colleges, mm -hmm. and even entire universities believe that giving their students higher grade will improve retention and the attractiveness of the classes and courses. Pressure and sensitivity to personal crisis. Recall what I mentioned in the previous chart. This is one of the political situation that the uh, professors were keen to give their students higher grades and they are always reluctant to give students Ds and F. Pressure to lower the expectations and deflate contents for non-traditional students. A large number of non-traditional students and large number of working students all tempt faculties to lower their expectations by reducing the number of textbooks, the amount of writing and the amount of homework in the course. The goal may be may be lower in responding to the particular needs of a specific student body, but the result may be inflated grades. After these possible causes, according to the literature, one, uh, there are also potential solutions for this problem. One of the most famous solutions had been done by the Princeton University in 2000 and four, in which they employed guidelines policy, in which they don't eat A range, A range is A minus A or A plus, except 35%, not more than 35%. In a matter of fact, it was very interesting because in 2009, the, the A range had, had been decreased to 39.7, less than 40%. If we can compare that with 2003, the A grade was at in 2003, mm -hmm. uh, as high as 48%. So this is one of the potential solutions. Again, there are a number, a number of universities in, in the East in recent years who attempted, which is very interesting, they attempted to add another grade to the transcript beside the individual grade. For each course listed, they show the student's grade and also show the average grade in the course. This is new method. This new method gives the employers looking over students' records a better picture. For example, if a graduate student will have, have awarded a B plus in a course with an average grade of his class of B, the average grade of the class, it looks much better than another student with A minus who joined a class with an average grade of A. Yes. So uh, this is a very nice idea. So as not to uh, yeah, misguide the recruitment of the of companies to the students. For my personal experience, I spent the last five years trying to construct an exam that can achieve a fair distribution of grades among my students. Recently, I am so glad to reach my goal by having my students' grades forming the ideal bell curve during this academic year in the, during the final exam of the first semester. As you see, as you all of you know, the bell curve the ideal for the normal population is to have the, the, the mean in the middle, which is C, and only about 5%. Anyway, this is the bell curve. This is my final results of this semester, which looks really the same like the ideal. So it's all about an exam. You have to grasp your subject. You have to know the mentality of your students. and. Accordingly, and this comes by experience, you can write an exam that coincides with the normal mentalities and follow the bell curve. Not to distribute your marks according to the bell curve, but write the exam according to your experience with your subject and students. So I, I will not miss to express my great thanks to all my senior professors and colleagues for their valuable experiences that I earned from uh, from them along my academic journey in real colleges of dentistry and pharmacy, which helped me a lot to achieve my academic goals. Finally, my recommendation is institutions must implement a new action plan to solve grade inflation problem and establish more effective means of grading. Colleges and universities should make grades meaningful. Ideally, this should be done not for the sake of any third party, colleges, employers, parents, or media, but because we owe our students a candid assessment of their achievements, their education should offer them a, a reality check so that they are prepared to build on what they truly do well and learn from what they do not. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, I think, for this uh, really nice, uh, clear, I mean, presentation about the grading. I know the time according to our schedule, almost we are late three minutes, but for fairness, we'll have to take one question from the female side and one question from the male side. If anyone from our colleague in the female would like to raise a question about the inflation of the grid, or she believe she give lower grade and she'll have to increase it, no one. Yes, hi. Only smiling. Yes, I do some. I think we can use the microphone, please. We have a microphone moving. So the other part they can see for you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. It's very nice. But uh, I think if you want to change or to, to change the rates, it must be something like national system according to all the countries. Because if we lower the grade of our students, the lost competition and also the other thing is the one to work in other things. Yeah, uh, yes, please. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for this. Uh, thank you for your question. Keep it on the front course. Uh, so everybody can listen for you. Yes, okay. uh, thank you very much for your question. Actually, I'm not uh, discussing anything related to our colleges. I'm speaking about a problem facing the famous universities in the world. Uh, and if there is something going to happen, this is in the hands of the stakeholders uh, to avoid it. I think uh, now when we put our hand and identify the problem, we can put solutions to prevent ourselves from having great inflation in our campus. But uh, I don't think we have any problem with great inflation, uh, like for example Harvard University. If you look at our eighth grades, it's not like Harvard. Uh, Harvard is very famous, I respect Harvard, in research, but the public became worried about the educational strength because actually they are willing to have their students employed. And as I mentioned, employment means high GPA, so they are doing marketing for their students. But for us here uh, in Saudi Arabia, I don't think uh, we are inflating uh, the grades for A's. Yeah, and we have, uh, we can, uh, must be an, yeah, our main is not A, A plus in all the students. So we don't have any uh, relation. We just want to know what is great inflation and try to avoid it in our institution. That's it. That's what the uh, message I want to say. I'm not accusing that we have uh, doing something. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Yeah, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much, Brother uh, uh, You know, it's a big problem everywhere. Grading, this uh, grading, whether inflated or not inflated, it's a big problem. My question to you is, what did you find out in your preparation about non-traditional grading? As you know, many schools, certainly Harvard Medical School, does not know the grade. They are all satisfactory, unsatisfactory. The dental school has a combination. Some courses are satisfactory, unsatisfactory, and some are letter graded. So in general, what do you find out about philosophy of grading satisfactory, unsatisfactory? Because there are implications of that, money term. Yeah, in a matter of fact, um, according to the media, uh, the Washington Post and many other media in USA, uh, that the most hot or the hottest point discussed in higher education is what happened in Harvard, that they are in, uh, giving A's to more than 50% of their students, to the extent that the dean of the university uh, 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 appeared in the media and uh, tried to, uh, 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 to uh, explain uh, or justify what's happening, that they are uh, taking, uh, they are hiring only the cream of the, of the students, the most brilliant students, and also have the ex excuse that they are doing so because they want their students to find, to be, uh, uh, having a good chance to be employed in the market. Uh, otherwise, uh, if, it, if it was not a problem, uh, it, could, it wouldn't be attacked or uh, combat from 
other universities, like Princeton universities, uh, there are uh, which which actually is a problem because there are other there are schools combating this problem and other schools, as you as you said, is not combating this problem. So there will be some sort of inequality between between the schools. Uh, regarding satisfactory and unsatisfactory, uh, this is uh, this issue actually depends on uh, uh, the student whether he is fair in his evaluation or not. Maybe maybe if he's uh, if he had been given a good uh, you are you are speaking about the student's evaluation or yeah maybe, maybe we cannot uh, trust uh, yeah, for example uh, any any committee uh, looking for a, a tutor or a, a faculty. Uh, sometimes, uh, if his evaluation or his evaluation is very high, this big inflation make them think maybe this doctor is not well qualified. Maybe he's giving higher grades so as to cover his deficiencies. Despite that, there are other faculties who are very, very effective, very uh, 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 innovative tutors, and they give uh, that the students have high marks because uh, high evaluation for him because he's really a very effective teacher. So this produced some sort of confusion. Yeah, by the way, I raised uh, a discussion on LinkedIn in a group called teacher, uh, Teaching Professors about this uh, grading education uh, problem, and I received 179 comments. By the way, few of these comments were, was with grading education. So, uh, it's not actually, uh, and all of these potential solutions have its defaults. It's not 100 percent. So, as to be honest with you, thank you, sir. I think for the sake of time, really, we'd like to extend our sincere thanks for Dr. Ahmed Hashaba. And I think the recommendation he raised it, it is so nice if we like to discuss it within our department meetings to establish a philosophy I mean, within the real colleges and mean, how we like to look for the great inflation and need. We will have to follow the same care that we have, which Dr. Khashab, I mean, just showed in his course. Or, at minimum, should be clear, I mean, with the faculty, the course director, by the end of the grading, realize that he has more than 43% or more than 30%. A plus, I mean, is this is, I mean, matching the line of real colleges or not matching it. So, to start with something as a guideline, I think it's really massive. Discuss in the department meeting for the next meeting. Then whatever the department they are looking for it, distribution of this grid. Then we can look for it in our colleges uh, board of the schools. Then we can use it as a guideline. So even if somebody tried to complain against you as a faculty, you see, I'm really matching the standard of the college. The standard of the college, we are expecting that A is like this and B like this. But you need to have a strong justification because suddenly you will not find all the students brilliant, they are A-plus students. This is impossible, I mean. It is not practical in all the universities. All these universities. So if this is, I mean, acceptable, that's what we can get, because we don't want to discuss it, then we leave it. <laughs> Let us, I mean, to look for it in the department, and uh, presentation as our habit, we put it in our website of the college assurance. So whatever the information, you like to use it as a reference. Even Dr. Hamad Fashab, he put down copyright, 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 okay? So, but this is only for the quality assurance, so, yeah, okay. It's my pleasure, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much.